Session demo applications can be tricky. We wanted to give you something that was really cool, really slick, and really cutting edge. But we wanted to give you something that you could use in your day-to-day -day life once you get back from Lotusphere. We think we found a good match that gives you tomorrow's innovations and what you can do for the next year to follow and really integrate not only your existing solutions, but cloud services, cloud solutions, and social networking with your current technology investment. What better way to show that than take a look at a core template within the IBM Lotus Notes Domino infrastructure, the document library. You see here we have a untouched Lotus Notes client user interface to the core 851 document library template. We have documents in a parent response data hierarchy. If I open up any of those documents, you'll see that it contains attachments for review. It can route through an approval cycle. Very standard functionality and the majority of applications within an infrastructure adopt the paradigms established within this template. The workflow, the document routing, the overall structure, left-hand navigation, content on the right-hand side. However, with the advent of X pages, we wanted to show you there's a few other ways that we can deliver this content and envelop other technologies, specifically social networking. Let's take a look at our overall transformed application and then we'll take a look at what we did to get to this fully functional XPage enabled version of the core document library. We'll start off with this dashboard. Now most Notes client applications circa 4.6 had a splash screen and navigator that had basic navigation on a home page that took you into the various parts of the application. Where the dashboard comes into play, it's more functional. A lot of content aggregation, uh, a lot of information up front for the user, and it's a paradigm shift that most SaaS developers have really adopted. A lot of social networking providers have adopted it as well. Take a look at Facebook. When you enter into Facebook's home page, you see your aggregated network, various posts, what they've done over the past 24 hours or however long it's been since you've last visited the website. This dashboard acts the same way. We have within here from a functional standpoint, a LinkedIn network stream. Now this is polling my LinkedIn network, pulling in content from my network. And we'll see here that a lot of people cross post their Twitter feeds with LinkedIn status updates. And that's what we're seeing here. If we go into the documents, we've changed the way that your typical notes application would handle documents. Instead of having a view and going into a document to have to make a change, we're going to be able to manipulate the content within the document library directly from the view. And there's a few other functional aspects of it which we'll dive into. First and foremost, we have a document. Now you see there's multiple documents on this page. And with pagination, we can go through the entire collection of documents as they're stored within the document library. But let's take a look at our first one here, X Library Enhancements. Now I have categories, uh, the originator, and I also have a comment section here. Now like Facebook, as previously mentioned, they have inline comments. This is a, a paradigm that's really picking up with Twitter feeds, LinkedIn, Google Plus, and Facebook the majority of commenting engines are all done in line. It really came from blog templates as far as having their comments in line. We've taken this paradigm and applied it to a document library where you have your parent document. You can have response documents done in line. Now one enhancement you'll see here 
not only is this done in line, and it supports rich text, but it also supports file attachments, any other content we would like to leave here. In addition to just the functional aspects of the application, we have a My Profile facility that we've tacked on without the need to re-engineer the application. We're actually able to store profiles for the individual user once they've authenticated into the system. And we're grabbing some very basic information that we will use throughout the application, such as their email address, Twitter ID, their public LinkedIn profile URL, and their connections email. Once that's entered, let's take a look at how that shows up within the application. If I take a look at the X-Library demo document example, I can see here that there's two reviewers and one originator. If I mouse over or click on an originator, I get their online presence profile. I can go through miscellaneous information such as email and my avatar which was pulled from my profile, my latest tweets which are aggregated from my Twitter feed, my connections profile which actually connects in via the email address and uses the OpenNTF inline business card control, and the LinkedIn profile which grabs your current public profile and displays a business card of that public profile. We have further integration with social networks if we take a look at the categories or keywords. If I mouse over any given keyword or click, I'll have a Google search so I can pull real-time analytics based off of that keyword. I can also do the same for Twitter and pull back who's tweeting about this given topic. I can also check LinkedIn to see who in my network is either talking about this or has it listed within their profile. This is Connect 2012. If I go to something that's more tech driven and I take a look at that LinkedIn profile search, there's many more people within my network that know Lotus Connections. Now that you've seen the X Library template in action, let's take a look under the hood. While we haven't modified any of the core design elements, making this application completely compliant with any support contracts with IBM and fully functional on the Lotus Notes client side, we did add several supporting design elements for our enhancements, such as a profile document form, which just holds the information that we surfaced via the X page, views that did the same, such as profiles, categories because we wanted a more dynamic lookup, and ascending and descending order sorted documents so we can have inline comments sort brand new at the top versus brand new at the bottom, and it can be a preference change within the application if you want it. But what we really added were simply X pages and custom controls. Now, there were multiple custom controls that handled the, f the functionality that you saw on the page, but the two we'll point out here are the keyword card and the social card. The keyword card, again, taking a look at the X Library application, if we hover over, this opens up an extension control dialog box using the Dojo uh, digit dot dialog, which surfaces three tabbed navigation of Google search, Twitter search, and LinkedIn profile search, which itself are three separate controls. Those controls are listed here. We have the widget for Google search, we have the Twitter search, and we have as a file resource more to more due to the idiosyncrasies with 
the LinkedIn JS API and XPage is not being able to necessarily handle the the various nuances of the JS API. File resources. Now let's take a look at the Google search. We're simply defining pass through query string parameters. When we open up this X page, we define a div with an ID of search results, and then we simply load via the API documentation a Google search, adding web search, video search, blog search, news search, and image search. We can additionally add local search and give you localized search results based on your current latitude and longitude coordinates or define a default and then we simply draw the results and populate this div. In action, we see it's pretty seamless. You have Google search, it loads the web, video, blog, news, and image. Twitter search, same thing, uses their own defined API to pull in their content. So we have here again query string parameters that define a key that's being passed through and that key is used to create via their API the custom Twitter feed search. LinkedIn was a little more complex to be honest mostly because of the API key and the auto authorization otherwise you would get prompted to log in which quite frankly, can be annoying. So we wanted to make sure that we auto-authorize. So once you log in to the site, if you haven't already, you will be asked to log in, and then you're done. It goes across all the pages. And we simply pull in the LinkedIn profile, pull the content directly from the, the publicly accessible LinkedIn API, and build our cards. To take a look at that again, the profile search, and we're defining our own list. The beauty of this technique is we have complete control over the rendered markup. So if we want to add or integrate any additional content or pull data from the notes database and have it surface in line with this control, we can certainly do that. Now the navigation control, and this is the keyword card, gets a little tricky. To do that we simply created a panel with links and used a DHTML so we didn't have to round trip to the server or rely on partial refreshes to, to refresh certain panes and then we would have execution timing issues. We simply open up the dialog. The dialog contains various divs and we're grabbing those divs and swapping them out, both hidden and unhidden, as needed. Social card acts the same way. If I take a look at the social card, I'm pulling in some basic information, and I will render based on whether a user has a profile or not. Let's take a look at someone who has information uh, has a profile but they are currently not using Twitter. I wanted to be able to surface that we indeed do not have Twitter information for this person versus putting in dummy information and then having it bomb out. It will also say that the person is no longer active on connections and pull in as much information as possible again depending on their participation via the various social networks. All that information is evaluated here, builds out the social card in this container, defines a data source, grabs that document, pulls in the profile, and then evaluates which information it should show. If they have a Twitter account, it will show the Twitter information. If not, it will show that descriptive text, so on and so forth. 
adding this to the document form and the document views was relatively simple. Now you won't see anything in the design pane because of the layout control from OpenNTF. But if we go further down, and I'll just cheat and do a quick social card search, you can see that this is written passing through custom properties for our custom control. So I have my property defined as key, and I'm passing it the from value on this document. To see that in play, here's the originator or the from, and it will go through the system and say, oh, I have a profile for this person. Let me pull up this information. And it starts going out to the using the various APIs of the social network, pulling their content in and surfacing it within this social card. Keyword cards are identical. So because there can be multiple keyword cards, I simply put it in a repeat, evaluate the value returning this category. So I have an individual entry. And then simply pass that through the keyword card. Again, giving me individual entries per keyword. Like all good CGI in a movie, social networking integration should be relatively seamless. The user shouldn't know that they're necessarily integrating with a social network. It should be an effortless usage of the application and allowing them to pull up additional information about a given individual or a given topic. Keeping this in mind, this is an example of where you can take a pre-existing application. Taking the data from that application, getting more information out of it, enabling your users to pull more information, not only about those other users of the system, but also the information within those systems. And at the end of the day, you can provide your users with an enhanced experience to their pre-existing applications on your own time while maintaining the Lotus Notes client user experience that they have today. Something tells me once they get used to this enhanced version of the same old application that they've been using for years and years, they're not going to want to go back.